Chevre, how are you? I hope everyone is gesund, stark, and freilich, begash mis I hope everyone is healthy, strong, and happy physically and spiritually. Today is Erev Shabbos Kedish Pashash Nitzavim, and it's Chavav Elo, and we're holding in a couple of days before Rosh Hashanah, and we'll speak in Mr. Hashem Ubez, Hashem Isbarech, a thought for the week. Today we're going to speak about the idea of how Hashem, a Yid, turns to Hashem and says, I want you and you alone. But first, as usual, we'll start with the Tefillah, and we'll start with a Pesach from Tilim, from the capital that we're saying twice a day these days, Kapitel Chavzayin, Kapitel Chavzayin, Pesach Yud. Ki ovi vi'imi azavuni vadino yasveini. Which literally translated, though my mother and father have forsaken me, God has taken me in. So there's many interpretations. One simple interpretation is, once I grew up, I left my parents home, so now the Abish is the one who takes care of me. Also in general, the parents have limitations. The parents can pass away, but Hashem is infinite, and therefore He's the one constant that can always help you. But according to Hasidus, I would imagine, and according to Kabbalah, the meaning over here is, Ki ovi vi'imi azavuni. Ovi could go on chokhme, even chokhme datzilis. And imi, as is known, goes on bina. We're talking about divine attributes, levels. And we're saying that sometimes, even if we consider the levels of godliness, that are godliness, the reflections, the rays, the levels, and it's not enough. What we have to do is go beyond the avi vi'imi. Ki avi vi'imi azavuni. If I look at it according to the rules, according to the gedorim of Seder Hashtalshlis, in the language of Chassidus, according to the terms, according to the laws of creation and the order and the system, then it won't help me. Avi vi'imi azavuni. What I need is vahavaya, the level which is beyond Seder Hashtalshlis, and that will be a sveini, that will protect me, that will make it good. So, this is going to be the theme we're going to be talking about. And I hope Emir Hashem to talk today about it, and then Emir Hashem before Rosh Hashanah to make another video, a second part. But in truth, and this has been mentioned already before, that especially in the light of Hasidus, and this is really one of the accomplishments of Hasidus and the Baal Shem Tov, is that Hashem is not a level that there is where he is to himself. And then the way he's playing with creation, where he's playing with the world, where he's supervising, where he's conducting, where he's managing. No. His essence is involved with the Jew. In other words, the Uftu Chassidus, like we spoke many times concerning Torah, even if you go over to a regular Jew who never learned Chassidus, and you ask him, what is the Torah? He'll say the Torah is God's guide for man. But is that what God has nothing better to think about? Of course he has better things to think about. Like what? Who knows? How am I supposed to know? But according to Pnimi Yisatayr, according to Kabbalah, according to the Torah Sabah Shem Tov, the whole point is that Yisrael Le'iraisov Kuchibrichu Kulachad, the essence of Hashem Himself, was put into the Torah. There's no higher level of Hashem which is not in the Torah. There's no higher level of Hashem where he's separated from Am Yisrael. We, Bnei Yisrael and Hashem, are connected at the deepest, highest level. However you're going to understand it. But that's the way it is, and that's the accomplishment of Chassidus. Without Chassidus, you could think you have a king, like we spoke many times, he's standing on the balcony, he's addressing the nation, but what do we have to do with the private king? The king has his in relation to himself. The king has his behind closed doors. Nothing. That's the way it is by a king, a melibus of Adam. But by the Ebesh, do we say it's not like that? A Yid and Hashem is completely one. So we'll see that first. And this was the idea of Chesidus. And the truth is, this is the whole idea of Tishrei. And the whole idea in general of Yiddishkeit. But in Tishrei in particular, we go from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, to Sukkot, to Simchas Torah. <laughs> it's all about revealing how the essence of a Yid, his neshama, 
at the highest, highest, deepest level, is connected with Atzmus Mahus, the essence of Hashem, at the highest, highest, deepest level. Rosh Hashanah it's brought out one way, Yom Kippur it's brought out another way, Sukkot it's brought out another way, and some Chastayim it's brought out even in another way. But really, it's all the same central theme with different facets and different aspects, how we bring it out. So in this week's Pasha, is one of the most amazing Chassidah Rashi's, where it speaks about how the Yidin do tshuva, and then afterwards is the ingathering of the exiles. And the Posik says, Kapitel Lamid, Posik Gimel, and the Posik says, V'shav Hashem alikecha shvuscha, that Hashem will return your captivity. V'nichamecha, and will have mercy on us, etc. So everyone knows the Rashi over here, Rashi on the words, V'shav Hashem alikecha shvuscha, Hashem will return your captivity. So Rashi says, If it means that Hashem will bring back those that were the captives, it should have said, He will bring back. He will return the captives. But because it says, Which means that He Himself is returning. He's in captivity. Rabbi Seinu Lomdim Mikan, our sages learned from here, Kaviyochol, as if it were possible, Shashchina Shruya Misrael, the Shechina rests with the Yidden, Batsaras Golusom, in the hardships of their exile, Uchshini Golim, and when Israel is redeemed, Hichtiv Geula Laatzmoi, Hashem has redemption written about himself. Shahu Yoshavimoim. Since Hashem is imaya neichi b'tzara, golu le'edei mishchini imayim. So therefore, since he is with the Eden in exile, he also returns from exile. And that's what it means, v'shav Hashem alikecha. He returns together with the Eden. Then Rashi says, v'yish le'imar, she'godl yeim kibbutz goliyas. So great is the day of the ingathering of the exiles. U'bekoishi. It will come about with difficulty. Ki illuhu atzmai, as if he himself, tzorech liyos, oichiz v'yodav mamesh, ish ish mim koimai, as if he himself has to actually hold each and every person with his hands to take him from his place in the exile. Ki inyin shenemar, this is what it says in the verse, v'atem t'luktu le'echad echad b'nei Yisrael, that everyone you shall be gathered one by one. I'm not sure which is the greater Chiddush, the first part in Rashi, which tells us the, the fact itself, that God himself is in exile. Even though we use the word Shechinta Begalusa, but it says in other places that it's also Bechol Tzorosim Loi Tzor Atzmusay, it's Kaviyoch, like the essence of Hashem is in exile. That's the first part of Rashi. Because wherever we go, he goes. The second part of Rashi brings out that, not the point that he's in exile, as if he has to be redeemed, but he comes to every Jew where he's at, in the individualistic level. He lowers himself to take every single person out as they are each in their own situation, their own personalized individualistic situation. So I want to talk about the second part of Rashi, but it's not a contradiction. But just to bring out that they're both fantastic, phenomenal ideas. And whether we look at the first part of Rashi or the second part of Rashi, the point is, according to Hasidus, we're dealing with Atzimus over here, with the essence of Hashem Himself, you alone. Now, let's go to the second part of Rashi, where it says, Bekoishi. What does it mean, it's Bekoishi? Something's difficult for God? He's a Kalyachal. The Chayel, Mami, Yinim. He's Kalyachal. He can do whatever He wants. But we use the word koishi when we're talking about something, as we mentioned previously today, something that goes against all the rules and the laws of the order of creation or the limits of any system. When we have to accomplish something which could be the fusion of opposites, something totally extraordinary which cannot be accomplished by anything else but the very source. As explained, we spoke about Oysa Shalom bin Raimov. God makes peace between Chesed and Gvura, etc. 
the source, which has no description, can bring together so-called opposites. So let's say when we say fire and water opposites, the opposites, once we talk about the system, that God made fire and he made water. And in a certain dimension, in a certain realm, fire and water are opposites. But since they both come from the same source, we have to say there's another dimension where they're not opposites. Now, so to over here, when we say that it's Bekoshi, it's because we're talking about the atom to look to Echad Echad in whatever mess or tzara or golos you're in, there's only one level that's able to go down there and meet you in your mud, in your cement, in your quicksand, and rescue you and not look at your circumstances and your situation and could accomplish it no matter what. You're in trouble. Who are you going to call? Atmos. <laughs> and we know this similar to what it says concerning Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim, where the Pesach says that who rescued B'nai Yisrael? Ani v'lei malach, ani v'lei saraf, ani v'lei shliach, the eibishter, ani b'chvaydai u b'atmai. And it's explained, see this, why? Because since the Yidin were then in the 49 portals of impurity, so there was no level of Seder Ishtalshalus that could accomplish this. There's no level of levels of revelations except for the essence of Hashem Himself that could bypass all the red tape, all the regulations, all the rules, all the conditions, and say, you know what? It makes no difference. So this is what's explained concerning the and Mitzrayim, that on what a level, in whatever level of Tumah they were, and at that time they were in the level of impurity of the 49 portals of impurity, there could be a level which that level is called, in relation to that level, darkness is not darkness. And darkness is as light. In other words, the source of light and the source of darkness. So in relation to that level, it could come into the greatest darkness and illuminate even that darkness. In other words, we need the power of essence to bypass, to penetrate, to permeate whatever barriers, whatever obstructions there are, and only the power of essence could reach that no matter what. The same is with the relationship, how the parent-child relationship that's connected to essence, which remains no matter what. But I don't want to go there yet. Let's first talk about this level, how we had to have the oimik roim, the ultimate, top, top, highest level, the essence of Hashem, that only the oimik roim, the deepest of the deep, of the highest level, could reach the oimik tochas, the lowest of the low. So that's what happened by Yitzhiz Mitzrayim. And this is what Rashi is talking about in the second Piddush of Rashi, because only the highest, highest level could accomplish this sort of nimnan and noyes <laughs> that could allow that there's a va'atam to look to echod echod. That means not only Hashem felt, feels our pain, like the first part of Rashi, which is amazing, He's there with us feeling our pain, but He feels the individualistic situation. It's a hislapshus, it's a total involvement through and through of every single individual. And being there totally with every single individual, whatever his situation is, he could take us out of that. So in the revelation of that level of essence, there still leaves room for the achas achas. That's the ultimate level. The atmos leaves room for the achas achas and is able to deal with the achas achas in every single way that it's not a threat to the individual. And that's what happened. And that's what the Pesach tells us in this week's parasha of Atim Mitzvah. And this is connected so much to the Aved of Rosh Hashanah and to the Aved of Slichas that we're in now. How it's connected to Rosh Hashanah more in detail, I think we'll leave that Amir Hashem for next week, Erev Rosh Hashanah. But now we're in the days of Slichas. Now, what do we say in Slichas? How do we start Slichas? We see the exact same theme, which the Rebbe talks about in many Slichas. First of all, we start Slichas with Lechol Hashem Hatzdoko Velano Habesh Esponim. We say Lechol Hashem Hatzdoko. And the Rebbe explains that, what does it mean when we say Lechol Hashem Hatzdoko? 
We're telling the Abish that we're going to you and to you alone. We're going for Asmus. As the Rebbe says, we're dealing with a level which is totally higher than all Seder Shtalshas. Again, higher than all the norms and all the order of descent of the world and higher than all levels. And the Rebbe explains it means we don't want to have to deal with Bezin Shalmaila. We don't want our justice as it's coming from a court which one interpretation of L'cha Hashem Atzlaka means justice. But over here we mean L'cha Hashem Atzlaka. L'cha, we want to deal with you alone and make it like charity, like Atzlaka. And the Rebbe says, in order for us to merit that, we have to go out of our limitations and then we'll merit to be able to deal with L'cha, with you and you alone. We get to, we get to that essence-to-essence essence level. And this is also how it's explained in the Chassidus. Besides for Lecha Hashem we have it also in another Pasik. We're actually going to start saying on Rosh Hashanah, but the Maimorim in Chassidus already from Chai Elul, the days of Slichas, the Maimorim, which are on the Pasik, which is Ki Imcho HaSlicho Leman Tivore Ki Imcho HaSlicho And what does it mean when we say Ki Imcho HaSlicho? Forgiveness is with you! With you alone! And over here too, the idea is we want to deal with you alone, Atmos. And there's two parts to this Ki'im Chaslicha. One idea is an analogy that Al Rebbe gave. It's a very famous analogy. It's brought down in the Hasidic discourse in Tavshin Tes. And there's a famous mimer from Tavshin Chavtes. I'm just going to read you first an English translation of the analogy. And this analogy teaches us that when we know that you have forgiveness, that will encourage us, that will encourage us to become better. That is the incentive for us to do tshuva. That's one part of it, one idea. And which goes like this. The analogy is that Alter Rebbe said, a borrower owes a large sum of money and can only afford to pay back half of it. And even this only gradually over many years. So everybody who's honest about himself at the end of the year, he's making a cheshman nefesh. <laughs> no one comes out perfect. And everybody owes a large sum of money. We could have been much better. As the famous saying in English goes, the biggest room is the room for improvement. So you can only pay back half of it and only gradually. If the lender is generous and accepts this arrangement... The borrower will work wholeheartedly to repay the loan, bit by bit, as he can afford. But if the lender is unbending and insists on the repayment of the entire loan, which would leave the borrower penniless, the borrower will despair of the matter and pay him nothing at all. So the Ebishta is the lender. And we turn to Hashem, we say, Ki im You're forgiving. You're merciful. And therefore, I know that you're going to be kind in how you're going to deal with it. And therefore, it gives me the incentive to pay. But if we're not going to feel that it's kimcha aslicha, then we're not going to pay. As the altar begins in his marshal. But there's another aspect over here of kimcha aslicha. That the the mercy comes from you alone. And over there in the Mimer, he adds this, which comes from the, um, if I remember correctly, from the Rabbeinu Bachaya, the Ibn Yechaya. And he says, because Haslicha Mufkedis Etzloch, Etzlicha, which means that this takes away any obstacles that could be to forgiveness. And he says, She'ein Zed Doim Elamelech Basavadam. It's not like when you have a king of a country, a physical, a king of flesh and blood. Even when the king wants to forgive, there's a lot of problems. There's a, there's a, there's a justice system. There's a legal system. Even when the king wants to forgive, 
Imcha bovad ki imcha aslicha. Imcha bovad. It's in your hands. In your hands alone. Hari ein lecha shum meneil esloyach. There's no opposition. There's no hindrances. And that's the point. Again, by a melibus of Adam, and even by the Eibishter, there's something called Seder Shtalshus. There's all year long. There's the regular time of the year. And like he says in the Maimer, Hagbola dinimusei v'chukei v'dinei ha-medina shekava ha-melech. The king himself set up a system. He set up prisons. He set up defense attorneys. He set up prosecutors. There's got to be some kind of system of law and order. But this is also the meaning when we say we want to deal with you alone. Ki im chaslicha. We don't want to deal with the whole system. We're going straight for you. Ich will dich allein, I'm turning to your essence. And that's what we have to arouse in ourselves in these days of slichas before Rosh Hashanah to reach the deeper level of our neshama which is loyal and dedicated and devoted to Hashem and bring that out. And we call out from our hearts, from the essence of our neshama, this reaches the essence of Hashem, l'cha, and in that way, each one of us will get a total, absolute k'sivach simateva, l'shana teva mesuka. Um, first, I'd like to say a story that happened in our kvutza, when I was a bacher, I was in shlichas in California. So we used to fabring, we had a fabring in every once a month, We'd all sit together and, and fabring, a chassidic fabringen. So one of these fabringens, one of the group, one of my friends, after sitting for a couple hours, he says, you know, I haven't heard from my nefesh alikis in a long time. <laughs> he said, I haven't heard from my nefesh alikis in a long time. So obviously this is classic chassidic lingo. You're sitting by a fabringen, you feel humble. You come to a moment of th truth, a moment of clarity. And you say, I haven't heard from my nefesh of the kiss, from my godly soul in a long time. Meaning to say, how do I really know what I'm doing is coming from the right place? How do I know what I'm really doing is not really feeding my ego? When was the last time I really, really went out of my own limitations or my own interests or my own agendas? So after he said this by the Fabrengen, and it was late at night, you know, it became a catchphrase in our group. You know, I haven't heard from my Nefesh kids in a long time. So the truth is, Chas V'Sholem. We all hear from my Nefesh kids much of the time. As the Altar Rebbe says in chapter 28 of the Tanya, when you said, Meida'ani l'farnecho melechai v'kayom, she'chazate b'nishmosi b'chem l'rabba munasecha today. You heard from your nefesh of the kids. Every good thing that you're doing is being motivated by your nefesh of the kids. And in these days of Elul, Melech Basada, our nefesh of the kids is alive and well. So just pay attention to your nefesh of the kids. And when you pay attention to the nefesh of the kids, the Abish himself is there with us, helping us get out of whatever situation we're in. I remember there was once a fabrengen of the Rebbe, I don't remember when, but I remember these words because it hit me so deeply. The Rebbe said once by a fabrengen, The Rebbe said, we dragged you out of the situation already once. How many times do we have to drag you out of the situation? And the answer is, that's what the Rebbe says in Tanya, Guess what? Mit der Rüsge schleppt einmal, mit der Rüsge schleppt in der Hunde tausendmal. We drag you out one time, the Ebisch will drag you out a hundred thousand times. This that the Rebbe says this <laughs> is because we're meant to understand that Achamecha Rabbim. We're meant to understand how we're helped. Be'ez Hashem is Barich. But that's what it means. V'shav Hashem. Hashem goes to each one of Atem to look to Echad Echad in every single person's situation. And I said this that I heard in the name of the Badichiva. I never saw it inside, but it's a phenomenal statement that the Badichiva said, you could be for God or against God, but never without Him. And that's what the Pasuk teaches, V'shav Hashem. 
Hashem is with us. In Chaydish Elo, Tov Shem Pei Aleph, in whatever situation we're at, and whatever situation we're in, and we just have to remember, L'cha Hashem Atztaka, Ki Imcha Aslicha, B'toiva Nireva Nigla, L'mata Me'asar Tvachem, Ksiv Echsim Ateva L'shan Ateva Mesurka, Posting from my home, Be'ez Hashem Izbarech, Your Man in Melbourne.